What is up, weather enthusiasts? I'm your host, Pat's Path Predictor. Let's get right into the weather. All right, so here's the situation we have for you, ladies and gentlemen. We have Tropical Depression 10 that is currently organizing in the Yucatan Strait, ladies and gentlemen. That's right. Invest 93L is now Tropical Depression 10. Here's our first advisory from the National Hurricane Center, the first public advisory. Currently, uh, winds are at 30 miles per hour. Pressure's 1,006 millibars. The present movement is it's stationary. Yeah, it's pretty much stalled out in the middle of the Yucatan Strait. And here's what we have going on. A tropical storm warning is in effect for the Yucatan Peninsula from Tulum to Rio Legatos, including uh, uh, Cozumel. If I'm mispronouncing this, I'm sorry. I'm not familiar with the area. And we have a tropical storm watch in effect for parts of Cuba, including Pinar del Rio and the Isle of Youth. So just to put that in perspective, we'll go ahead and show you the cone we have right here. So the western tip of Cuba and their, uh, and their Cuban island right here is under a tropical storm watch. And parts of the Yucatan Peninsula are currently under a tropical storm warning as this thing is pretty much stalled out and continuing to rapidly organize as time continues to go on. And here is the cone we have right here. According to the National Hurricane Center, it is anticipated to strengthen into a hurricane before making landfall near the Big Bend right here in Florida, just east of the Florida Panhandle. So this is something we need to absolutely monitor as basically the models are coming in. It's come, it's kind of shifting back and forth between the Panhandle, the Big Bend, and then northwest the what Northwest Florida Peninsula. So we'll have to continue to monitor it as time continues to go on. So that's what we have going on right here. In fact, the state of Florida is actually taking this pretty seriously. They've declared a state of emergency as a possible tropical system is forming in, in the Yucatan Strait. Florida Governor Ron DeSantis declared a state of emergency Saturday for most of the state's Gulf Coast, uh, including 33 counties out, out of the state, 67 NHC says there's an overall 70% chance this will be a tropical storm by Monday and 90% chance overall. Personally, if you're if based if I'm looking at this, I'm thinking this is going to become a uh, become a tropical storm either by tonight or very early tomorrow around 4 a.m. or 5 a.m. Eastern tomorrow. That's what I'm thinking considering how rapidly this organizing this is organizing how rapidly this could potentially intensify. And because of the fact that it's moving through very great conditions, right now it's in the center of the Yucatan Strait. It's about 60 or so miles off the coast of the Yucatan Peninsula due to that relocation of its center from earlier. And based off of that, it's not going to be meandering into the Yucatan Peninsula that much anymore. It's going to have a lot more capital and a lot more warm water to work with, and it has plenty of warm water to work with. 29 30 plus degrees celsius across much of the yucatan strait right here so this is definitely something we need to continue to keep an eye on as time continues to go on we also have a lot of ocean heat content uh, to work uh, that this thing has to work with as well we have 170 uh, plus ohc uh, by the Yucatan Strait right here. So this is something we need to continue to monitor as it's just going to be sitting there for the next at least 24 hours before moving north into the Gulf of Mexico, approaching Florida. So depending on how it uses this next 24 hours, either A, it's going to continue rapidly organizing and it's going to start strengthening uh, pretty rapidly and then approach Florida like that, or B, it's going to take its time to organize and it's definitely and it's going to enter the Gulf of uh, the Gulf Stream and start intensifying there. So that's what we have going on right here. Personally, I think this is going to be a tropical storm by the time it enters the Gulf of Mexico. That's what I'm thinking. That's pretty much what the NHC agrees with. Here's their forecast advisory we have right here. This gets up, according to them, to a minimal uh, Category 1 hurricane. However, there's a lot more room for this thing to, uh, to grow. And by the time this thing does exit uh, the uh, exit Florida, uh, not Florida, exit uh, the Caribbean Sea by Monday... It is forecasted to become at least a 45 knot or 50 mile per hour tropical storm. I think honestly it could get as high as 60, primarily due to all the conditions that's going on there. So this is something we need to monitor as time continues to go on. If you go ahead and show you the wind shear right here, yeah, the wind shear is continuing to weaken. The, you're starting to see a lot more of a reduction, and even in the last three hours, wind shear across the Caribbean and across the Gulf of Mexico, gone. 
We're down to like 25 knots in the Caribbean. Earlier, we were up to 40. We were down to like 25 to 30 knots in, in the path of Tropical Depression 10. We were at 40 earlier. So this is going to going to be a trend that's going to continue to pick up in the next 24 hours. And I don't expect this to have very many issues of development or organization while it's stalled out in the Yucatan Strait. So here's that's the situation we got right here talking about this. We're going to go ahead and show you the track models and the intensity. Track models kind of uh, up and down, a little iffy right now. We have some models have it approaching the eastern end of the Florida Panhandle. Other models have it approaching the Big Bend. Some I've seen have it go getting near Tampa and then making landfall about 100 miles northwest uh, north of there. So we'll have to pay attention to that. There's still going to be quite a bit of uncertainty. But what we can say is that Anywhere from the Florida Panhandle to Tampa is a possible landfall area at this time. So if you're anywhere on this coast, you need to start preparing. You need to start preparing adequately. If the governor orders you to evacuate, evacuate. If the local officials order you to evacuate, evacuate. Listen to them. They're the best people for the job. Don't, I'm just here providing you all the information. Just listen to them when they when it tell, they tell you to evacuate. So here's the intensity runs. Majority of the models keep this around Category 1 to Category 2 strength. However, we've seen some models up here get it up to major hurricane strength. So same with uh, other models that aren't, aren't even in this aggregate right here. They are calling for that. So we need to take this very seriously, folks. This has a lot of room to breathe and a lot of room to grow. So this is uh, quite the situation we need to absolutely take seriously, folks. Even a Category 1 hurricane can still cause a lot of damage, ladies and gentlemen. Now we're going to go ahead and show you the, uh, the model runs that we've been showing you. Now, these are bits and pieces of the runs. But they go out enough to show a fl uh, show when it's going to make landfall. So here's the HMON run. The HMON has this thing actually organizing at a very rapid pace. It stays off the coast of the Yucatan Peninsula. And by 33 hours, we're already at a Category 1 hurricane with a pressure of 989 millibars right here. So this is what the HMON It's having one of those scenarios where it organizes at a very rapid pace. Either way, the Yucatan Peninsula and Western Cuba are still going to see a lot of impacts from this. And then by the time it enters the Gulf of Mexico, it's already a well-established Cat 1 hurricane, and it starts to strengthen even more. It gets down to a 970, 969, 963 millibar system. This isn't even before it makes landfall. It still has some time over water for it to strengthen. I'd say this uh, high-end Category 2 hurricane as it's approaching right now, and it could get up to a Category 3 hurricane according to what I've been seeing so far, and this is expected to make landfall near the App App Appalachicola Bay right area right here according to the HMON based on the trajectory. Here's the HAFS models. Here's the HAFSA right here. We're going to go ahead and pull this back a bit. We're going to go ahead and start here. This is where it's happening. It's starting to organize and develop. In the next 24 hours, it gets down to a 994 millibar, either a strong tropical storm or a weak hurricane. And then by the time it enters the uh, the Gulf of Mexico, it's most likely going to be at hurricane strength before, uh, right after making landfall on the very western tip of Cuba as a Category 1. And then it starts to organize. It actually has a lot further east than some of the other models have, showing that potentially Tampa Bay, Tampa, St. Pete, Petersburg could see some hurricane force gusts as t uh, as we move through. So if you're watching from the Tampa Bay area, you guys need to take this very seriously. You guys, just because you're not in the landfall area doesn't mean it's not going to impact you. So that, as you can see, this thing makes landfall, and then it par move, uh, moves into the uh, off the coast of the Carolinas and parallels that. So that's what we have going on on that front over there. The last run we're going to go ahead and show you is the HAFSB because the H wharf isn't out yet, but still similar situation right here. It kind of has it organizing and developing and doing the same thing, except it has it making landfall in the Big Bend area, 960 mil, uh, seven millibar system, high end category two, maybe low end category three. So that's our situation we have right here. A lot of these runs are calling for some very serious situations, even as a category one, once again, you guys need to take this very seriously. So we'll update you here on the Pat's Path Predictor channel. Be sure to subscribe to the channel if you are new. It helps us out, helps us make more videos like these. The goal of this channel is to get more people engaged with weather. Also, please be sure to leave a like. But with that being said, have a wonderful day, guys. Stay safe.